if you want to learn more about pre-fermentation, keep watching this video. Good morning everyone and welcome to another baking video. Today talking about bread, we'll be talking instead about fermentation, but not the regular fermentation. Today we'll be doing pre-fermentation. But what is pre-fermentation? Good question, Dr. Gluten. Pre-fermentation, as the word means by itself, is fermenting a dough previously. We'll be making just a piece of dough a few hours before or maybe or even up to 24 hours before we make the final dough. What these pre-fermented doughs will give us are a lot of benefits, such as better taste, better aroma, better perfumes, a stronger gluten development, and also better balance between the strength and the extensibility of this dough, better and crispy crust, and it will fill the dough with a lot of gases. No, I was talking about CO2, and also some alcohol, not that, and a little bit of acidity. And all this mixture of things will even help the durability of the final bread. The world of the preferments is divided in two. On one side we have a natural preferment, and on the other side we have the preferments made with commercial yeast. So on one side, the natural side, the preferment that I'm talking about, of course, is my friend, sourdough starter, also known as Levan. I won't be talking about too much about this preferment because in this channel you have zillion videos about it. So how do you make the sourdough starter? It is really easy. We just need some flour and some water in equal parts and we'll mix them and let the nature work for us. All the natural yeast which are present in the flour and also in the air and the lactobacteria will ferment this flour within four or five days. And then we'll have this incredible preferment ready to bake beautiful loaves. So what are the benefits of using sourdough starter in our loaves? First of all, the taste will be incredibly good. Also the smell, beautiful aroma. They will last longer if you don't eat it before, but the shelf life, as it is known in bakery, will be longer. That's a good benefit. And also the crust. You'll have this crispy and golden crust, which is beautiful. So don't worry, I won't complicate this video today that much. I will be using just commercial yeast, which is divided in two. On one side we have the fresh yeast, and on the other side we have the instant yeast. But what is the difference between these two yeasts? It's the same yeast, it's the same which is a fungus who is in charge of fermenting the dough. But just one thing, when you're using fresh yeast, or dehydrated yeast, the instant yeast, there's some equation that we have to do. One gram of instant yeast is three grams of fresh yeast and vice versa. Three grams of fresh yeast are one gram of instant yeast. So now that we know a lot about yeast, let's start with the main course. We'll be making a pulish, a sponge, the Italian biga, and also the pâté fermenté. So let's start with the first preferment, known as Polish, but we should say better Polish, yes, because it comes from Poland. But this preferment is not much used in Poland as much as it is in France. And what kind of bread do they do in France? The baguette. But as I told you, the preferments have a lot of benefits. But in this case, in the Polish, the main one is that it makes the dough much more extensible, something that we're looking for when we are making French baguettes. But what else can we bake with the Polish? Well, there are a lot of things that we could do. Beautiful chapatas and some French cantaloupe. So, enough theory, let's start the Polish. And here you see the basic Polish formula. So in the bowl, we put the flour. In this case, I'm using white flour, but of course you could use some whole wheat flour. Now we add the water, the same weight as the flour, and now here goes fresh yeast. Remember that you're using dry yeast, it's just one third. We start mixing it with the spoon until everything is well combined. Now I'll cover it and leave it here on the counter for around 8 to 12 hours at room temperature. And then we'll have it ready to bake some bread. 
The amount that we need most of the time in baker's percentage is 20%. Are you lost with all the sourdough bread recipes that you find on the internet? Would you like to learn all the tips and tricks to make your own sourdough bread at home? Then I have the solution. I have designed the perfect masterclass of sourdough bread just made for you. By clicking the link on the description, you will learn how to make and take care of your sourdough starter, how to knead, shape, ferment, and bake your sourdough bread, how to use and read the baker's percentage, all the basic techniques to bake like a pro at home, and how to read and understand your dough. Don't miss out on it and click the link on the description right now. Let's continue with the next preferment, which is related to the previous one, the polish or polish, which is called sponge. Yeah, not this one. This is a serious video. This preferment, this sponge, is mostly the same as the polish, only that it uses a little bit less of water. The hydration is around 85% and it uses a little bit more of yeast, which makes this preferment ferment more faster. And here I have for you the classical formula. And the amount that you can use in a dough is around 20%. And what kind of bread can we do with this sponge preferment? All the doughs which are enriched. When I mean rich, I'm talking about butter, eggs, milk, that's an enriched dough. And with this dough, of course, you can make this wonderful sandwich bread, brioche bread, or even some gorgeous burger buns. In a bowl, we put the flour. Now we add the water, which is a little bit less than the weight of the flour. And now we add the yeast. Pay attention, now I'm using more yeast than before. We mix it. As you can see, it's a little bit more dense. Now everything is incorporated and we're done. Now we cover it, leave it here on the counter at room temperature till it doubles in size and it will be ready to start baking bread. Okay, let's continue with this preferment trip around the world. Now we are in Italy. Yes, the home of the biga. And as I told you before, all the benefits that the preferments give to our doughs is that the biga will fill your dough with all the aromas and perfumes from Rome. Yes, one way straight to Italy. There are two things that characterize the biga. The first one is that the dough is a little bit drier than the other ones that we've seen. It uses just around 50% hydration, which means in one kilo of flour we have half kilo water. And the second one is that the biga benefits to a better gluten network development. But what kind of bread can we make with the biga? Of course, everything Italian. Pizza, focaccia, ciapatta and many other delicious things. And finally, how much bigger do we use in the dough? Usually you can use between 20 or 30%, but I've been using even 80 up to 100% big in the dough. Yes, all the flour of the recipe was in the bigger. And here in the channel you have a lot of videos about that too. Okay, enough talking, and let's see how do we make the bigger. Here's the classic formula. In the container we put the flour. Now we add the water, which is the half of the weight of the flour, and we add the yeast. Now we start mixing it. As you can see, this is a very, very dry dough. It's full of chunks, but it's okay. That's the way that the biga should be done. So we cover it so it doesn't get more dry and we leave it here on the counter for around 18 hours. It depends a little bit on the room temperature. So on the next day, we'll get this beautiful biga. As you can see, it has not doubled in size, which is okay. And you still see those chunks here, which is also normal. So the biga is ready to be used at this point. Okay, time to move on to the last preferment of this video, which is the pâté fermenté. Oui, répétez avec moi, pâté fermenté. What is the pâté fermenté? It's some kind of pâté that you can put on toast. Pâté fermenté is an old dough. It's just a dough that we've done one day before. So this preferment is the easiest one because it's just some bread dough. 
And the difference between this one and the other ones that we've seen in the video is that this one is the only one which has salt in it. Why? Because it's just a bread dough. The dough that I'm showing now is just a regular bread dough. But if you want just a good bread recipe, here is one. And how much pâté fermenté do you use in a dough? There's not much of a rule, but if you want to take it to baker's percentage, it should be around from 10 to 20%. Okay, now it's the end of the video, and I hope you have learned something. Of course, there is much more information. We could have done one video for each pre-ferment, but the idea was to show you a little bit more about this beautiful pre-fermented world. But remember, you can also try mixing all these pre-ferments in one dough. I've never said that. So please write me some comments, like it if you want, share it, and I'll see you on the next video. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter, I encourage you to check the link on the description. And remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you.